Well, welcome back everyone to our video series on the National Sheep Improvement Program. Uh, in our last video, we talked just a little bit about what NSIP is as an organization and why it's important that we focus on genetic selection for the U.S. sheep industry. We talked about um, how when we're trying to make uh, selection decisions, it's important to utilize all the information that we possibly can so we can make an accurate selection decision so that we can have a profitable uh, sheep flock. The way the NSIP helps out the U.S. sheep industry is through these tools called estimated breeding values. So estimated breeding values, or abbreviated EBVs, are tools that the sheep producers can use to minimize guesswork of ram and ewe selection. We minimize that guesswork by assigning a number value to the genetic merit of an animal for a particular trait. And because there's a number value assigned to that genetic merit, it allows for quick and easy comparisons. We're taking out the environmental uh, aspects, the management aspects, um, when we're actually looking at these animals, uh, just focusing on the genetic potential there. And it's, these EBVs are extremely powerful statistics, more powerful than actual performance data. So more powerful than a, a weaning weight or even an adjusted weaning weight or an adjusted post weaning weight. Uh, we'll get into where that power comes from here in just a few slides. One of the most important parts is that all these estimated breeding values are focused on economically important traits. When uh, one of the benefits to our sheep industry is that uh, we have a very diverse industry and sheep can be utilized to produce a variety of different products uh, in, a in a variety of different environments. So we really focus on those traits. Uh, they're going to be economically important. Um, those are going to fit a certain environment, fit a certain market, uh, all of those being economically important to the overall profitability of a sheep operation. So how do we get these estimated breeding values? I mentioned in our last video, it starts with on-farm uh, data collection. So we start with measuring phenotypic traits of animals. Uh, it's a fairly simple process. It's simply collecting uh, phenotypic traits of animals at certain time periods. So phenotypic traits are just things like body weights, uh, things like carcass measurements through ultrasound. So collecting ultrasound images for uh, eye muscle and fat deposition. Reproductive traits, things like type of birth, type of rearing. Was it born a twin, uh, raised a twin, born a triplet or a single? If wool traits are important to your operation, we'll measure wool traits, things like grease fleece weight, uh, staple length, things, uh, things like your uh, fiber diameter. And one that we're really focusing on these uh, workshops is the fecal egg counts or how resistant are these animals to uh, internal parasites. Okay. So fairly simple process on farm. We're simply measuring uh, certain phenotypic traits and that information is then being submitted to NSIP for analysis. And this is where the statistical power of NSIP comes into play. Okay. So these animals, they're all raised uh, on their, their respective uh, farms or ranches. Okay. And we assume that uh, the majority of animals within a, a production operation, they're going to be managed in a similar way. Uh, you know, you're going to be raising the majority of your lambs uh, as one contemporary group or one management group. Um, so they're going to be under a certain, uh, a similar environment to all their contemporaries. Okay. Well, that's a great thing for us when we're looking at genetic evaluation because we're trying to eliminate those environmental differences. So we have a lamb here. And because he was raised on your farm or your ranch and raised in a similar fashion to all the other animals there at your place, we can uh, have a decent estimate of his genetic potential. Okay? We can eliminate those environmental differences because they were all uh, raised in the same environment. Okay? But we're gonna build upon that because we know we can do a little bit better job of evaluating the actual genetic potential of those animals. First thing we're gonna do is we know that uh, this animal here, uh, he is the result of uh, this pairing between this ram and this ewe. So we know that uh, this, our lamb in question, he received his genes for production from somewhere, okay? Theoretically, he got half of them from his sire and half of them from his dam, okay? And these genes, these are gonna code for his performance. So he inherited genes for things like weaning weight or inherited genes for things like parasite resistance. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare our lamb in question, compare his, um, his phenotypic performance or his, uh, his uh, actual performance to that of his two parents. Okay? So we compare his weaning weight, for example, to the weaning weight of his sire, the weaning weight of his dam. And we utilize that information in our individual lamb's EBV calculations. 
I could take it a step further though. Let's say that our individual in question was born a twin, raised a twin. Okay? We know that since these two lambs here, they share common ancestors. We know that they have genes that are in common. Theoretically, they share 50% of their genes. Okay, so we can utilize his um, uh, sibling's performance and utilize that in his estimated breeding value calculation. All of this genetic information can be used to help us to quantify his genetic merit. And let's say we have some half siblings over here. Okay, so these lambs over here, they share a sire with our lamb in question. We're gonna utilize their performance information in his EBV calculations. And let's say he's got a third cousin twice removed on a farm that's three states away. Okay, these lambs still have genes in common because they share common ancestors. That means that we're interested in his performance so we can utilize it in our individual EBV calculations. Okay. We're gonna take all of the performance information of every known relative to our lamb in question and utilize it in his EBV calculations. And we use that for every single sheep throughout the evaluation at NSIP. So we take our individual uh, animal's performance information. He's compared to his contemporaries uh, on his farm and on his ranch, standardized for environment because he was raised in a uh, management group there on your farm or on your ranch. Then he's com uh, compared to every single known relative in the system, including relatives on other flocks. So this is a way that we can separate environmental differences because we're testing similar genetic lines in multiple environments, multiple management strategies. All of that helps us to parse out what differences in performance are due to genetics versus what are uh, due to uh, environmental differences. And then we're gonna take that information and we're gonna uh, account for things like genetic relationships and genetic correlations and antagonisms, heritabilities of traits, uh, all sorts of different things go into these uh, genetic calculations. And at the end of the day, what we're left with is a panel of estimated breeding values. So here we have a, an individual ram, and here's a panel of estimated breeding values or genetic potentials for that animal. So let's go through an example here, what these EBVs actually mean. So these estimated breeding values, uh, each of these, they're a, a set of abbreviations, and we have an age category, and we have a measurement type. So in this example, we have WWT stands for weaning weight. And this animal has a 3.0 kilogram uh, estimated breeding value for weaning weight. So what that tells us is that this individual in question, he has the genetic potential to be three kilograms heavier at weaning time than the base average of that breed. Okay, So his EBV, that is his genetic potential for that trait. Again, this animal, he has a 3.0. That means he has the genetic potential to be three kilograms heavier uh, at weaning time than the base average of that breed. Hey, we're going to go through a little bit of arithmetic here. So you can pull out some scrap paper and a pencil. We'll go through some math. So I mentioned that this is our individual in question. This is his genetic potential for weaning weight. But I'm really interested in this as a breeding animal. Um, if he's a ram, I'm interested to see what his progeny are going to do. Okay, I really don't care what his weaning weight is. I want to know what uh, the weaning weight will be of his progeny. So if he sires lambs on my operation, those lambs are gonna inherit half of their genes from that sire. So we would expect his lambs to perform half as good. Okay, so we take this number, we divide it by two. That tells us that we would expect uh, lambs from this ram to have the genetic potential to be at least one and a half kilograms heavier at weaning time compared to the base average. Okay, we're gonna do one more step of arithmetic and then we'll be done with our math for the, for the day. I mentioned that this is listed in kilograms here. Okay? Since most of us are used to thinking in terms of pounds, okay, we're going to convert this back to pounds. So it's 2.2 pounds per kilogram. We can simply multiply this by 2.2. Okay? If you catch on to the drift here, though, we just divided this number by 2 to see what his uh, progeny were going to do. Then we're going to multiply it by 2.2. Essentially, you can think of this as the genetic potential of their lambs in pounds. So we would expect lambs from this ram to be about three pounds heavier at weaning time than the base average of that breed. So we did a weaning weight example here. We also have uh, several others here up on the screen. We have a, a post weaning weight or PWWT. So after weaning time, what is the genetic potential for uh, weight here? 
Uh, we can look at things like our carcass traits. So we have eye muscle depth here. This is the genetic potential uh, of his lambs for eye muscle depth. We also have fleece traits over here. So fiber diameter, grease fleece weight, staple length. Okay. There's a whole big long list of traits that are available, uh, which can be seen here in this table. Now, I understand this is a very busy table, but what this illustrates here is we have our age categories uh, across the Y here and across the top, we have the different measurement types. So to actually get in and digest this table, um, if you look at the combination of cells uh, between an age category and a measurement type, if the cell says yes in it, that means there's an EBV for that. So if I'm interested in carcass ultrasound traits at the post weaning time period, I come to that cell and it says yes. If I'm interested in fecal egg counts uh, at the weaning time period, I come to that cell and it says yes. Okay. So as you can see, there's uh, tons of different uh, age category and measurement type estimated breeding values that can be utilized in your operation. Now, just because uh, there's all these different EBVs available, that doesn't mean that you have to collect all of that data uh, on your farm or on your ranch. Okay. If, you, uh, if you look at this, you could potentially weigh your sheep every 30 to 60 days uh, if you wanted to. You could ultrasound your animals three different times, take a multitude of different flea samples and scrotal circumferences and worm egg counts, and you can be collecting data until the cows come home. What I usually tell people is that if uh, there's a trait that's economically important to you, or there's an economically important trait to the customers of that are buying your genetics, you'll wanna measure those traits, okay? There's no traits that are mandatory to be measured in NSIP. If it's economically important to you, you'll measure that trait. You don't have to collect all of them. You simply collect the traits that are gonna be beneficial to your operation. Okay. So in our next couple of slides, we're gonna talk about uh, uh, actually applying some of these uh, genetic selection techniques. Uh, the big question everyone wants to know is, does it work? So tune into the next video and we'll uh, see some real world examples of these estimated breeding values in practice.